Hello and welcome to Gen 2. I'm Nathaniel Cochran. And I'm Madeline Musbauer. And this is your source for all things video game and tech related. Let's start things off with this week's up and coming releases. You can look forward to seeing these titles and many more released throughout the month on your favorite platforms. After the last few weeks of glorious releases, we have died down a little, so here's what we've got for you. Battlefield 5 for the PS4, Xbox One, PC on November 20th. This is a first person shooter developed by DICE and published by EA. This is the 16th installment of the Battlefield franchise. This will continue on from the previous installment, Battlefield 1, but now we'll be focusing on World War II. Wreckfest for the PS4 and Xbox One on November 20th. This racing video game was developed by Bugbear Entertainment and published by THQ Nordic. It is described as a spiritual successor to the Flat Out series, and it's also been called a cross between Flat Out, Destruction Derby, and Colt 1989 PC Racer Street Rod. So this game is basically a demolition derby alongside some traditional track racing. These games and many more will be releasing throughout the month, so be sure to keep an eye out for them. Up next, check out Bits and Bytes with Madeline. It's her. Plays games. She's not good at them. Hello and welcome back to another episode of Bits and Bytes. Jake and I are playing a worm game. What is it? It's, it's Worms Battlegrounds. Okay. Right. So my goal is to win. Let's uh -huh, see if that's... Uh-huh, uh-huh. Let's see if that's achievable. Yeah, and you're red, by the way, and I'm blue. Box you. I don't know. Sure. You're you're blue. Yes, I'm blue. You're. Are right. you sure? Yes. Or is this like already sabotaged? No, I'm blue. All right. What are, what are you dropping off some some pills for me? Oh, I thought they were like mm -hmm. crates of doom. Maybe. It's on my missile. <laughs> oh. I don't like this game. <laughs> First off, it doesn't explain how to play. It's true. It's just, it's just, it's just first. Second off, though. the worms are tiny, so you can't even see where you're going. Actually, I don't have a strategy in this game because they don't give you instructions. This is bull crap. All right, all right, here we go. I'm trying to get this down. You can die. What's on it? Just right. I just wanted to come say hello. Oh no. Okay, where is? All right, it's a nail biting game now. He's down to two arms. I'm down to one. It's almost a tie. Run. D run, dude. Run. Yes. And yes. it only burned my dude. <gasps> yes. Go off that map. Oh, dang. Good work, dude. Am I alive? I'm proud of you. Yes. Victory is mine. <laughs> Story. Mother trucker dude. Like, first off, the worms are tiny. Second mm -hmm, off, mm -hmm. it doesn't explain what each weapon does. You have to, like, try it yourself, but you can't even see where you're aiming at. So, like, that thing's sure. pointless. Sure. I am giving you a one out of five. Okay. The graphics. These were pretty good. Like, They're cute. Fun. Yeah, it's like a computer game. Mm -hmm. Your basic average every day, or average every day, average ever not. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, right average score three out of fifteen. Sure. Three out of five. <laughs> it's replayability. I actually can see myself like wanting to do it. Wanting to figure out all the weapons. Maybe like just a four. A four. Three, four. Okay. Four. So that's. Eight? Yeah, that's the lowest scoring game. An eight out of 15. And it's not because it's a bad game, it's just your story sucks. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for more Gen 2. Thanks, Madeline. You're welcome. Player Unknown's Battleground has been available for the PC and Xbox One since 2017. Well, PUBG Core announced that this wildly popular Battle Royale is coming to the PS4 on December 7th. Now y'all get a short break to save some money after spending on all those awesome deals we told you about last week. While there are differences between the different versions of the game, one of PUBG Core's primary goals has been to unify the game across all platforms. This way, players will have yet another place to play all the games with their friends. Who knows, maybe Sony will work on allowing cross-platform play with PUBG when it comes out. I mean, they did do it for Fortnite. PUBG will retail for $30, just like on Xbox One and PC. It'll be available for pre-order. And if you do pre-order, you'll get some special sets of PS4 exclusive outfits looking fierce. <laughs> we will continue after some commercials, but first here's Aaron with Fluid Fighters. He's fluid. No, he's just fluid. I love fish <laughs> hey, welcome back to Fluid Fighters with Aaron, where I express my love for some of my favorite games with movement systems that enhance gameplay and make the in-game traversal a blast. This week we're going to be looking at Bloodborne, a PlayStation 4 exclusive. Bloodborne is developed by From Software. 
Bloodborne falls into the same vein as From Software's most recent works, the Dark Souls series. Much like Dark Souls, Bloodborne is a difficult action RPG that places a larger emphasis on taking the offensive than the Dark Souls games. Where those games are usually played slower as you cowered behind a shield waiting for the right moment to attack the enemy, Bloodborne is a different beast as the game's combat is meant to be fast and aggressive. This was something of a learning curve for me as I was coming in being used to Dark Souls' patient and more methodical battles. Not having a shield as a crutch was something that I had to get used to at first, and I died a lot in the beginning as a result. The only real defensive maneuvers available are dodge rolling and parrying with the gun, which opens the chance for you to deal some serious damage. This was enough to get me through the first two bosses easily enough, until I hit another wall on the third boss, who I thought was simply too quick to dodge. Eventually I learned two more lessons that helped carry me through the rest of the game. Dodging forward or sideways is usually better than dodging backwards, and that sometimes the best way to counter getting hit in the mouth is to hit him in the mouth even harder. In Dark Souls, taking damage was always a scary sight. Watching your ever-precious health bar chip away, with your only means of refilling it being the healing items that open you up to another assault. In Bloodborne, you have a limited amount of time to strike back at the opponent and get back the valuable life they were taking from you. In Dark Souls, getting hit brought fear, but in Bloodborne it brings rage. Each blow an enemy lands adds fuel to the fire, as any aggression built up on this difficult journey comes pouring out of you and into your character, as you lash back to regain your health and put down the enemy who stands before you. If you decide to invest the time and effort required, this game is truly a unique and rewarding experience. It is a challenge that will force you to pay constant attention to your surroundings, to rethink every strategy that didn't turn out so well, and to weigh out all the plausible options before making a decision. You have no choice but to adapt to the demands of the game. It is no surprise, then, that tons of communities have been formed to talk about and discuss the elements of Bloodborne, but the major factor that led me to regard it as a valuable investment of my time was the lessons that it teaches you. The world is not necessarily a beautiful place. Not everything is there to suit your needs. Sometimes there's no other option but to adapt to what's in front of you. And to do this, it's vital to keep a cool head and not let yourself be thrown around by frustration and despair. Dying is inevitable, but that massive and scary monster is still there for you to kill. And you now know more about your enemy than ever before. It'd be hard for me to not recommend this game. Even though it's hard to get used to at the beginning, effort is rewarded with a memorable experience that is complemented by fast and frantic gameplay that rewards you with a great feeling of satisfaction after every fight. Once you're done with the countless hours that this game will have you stuck in front of the screen, you won't resist the urge to look for similar franchises. <laughs> Dark Souls. This was Aaron with Fluid Fighters. Thank you for watching Gen 2. Welcome back to Gen 2, I'm Madeline. And I'm Nathaniel. And you just saw Fluid Fighters with Aaron. Tetris Effects is as much about the music and visuals that make each skin unique, as well as the actual game itself. Although you may certainly dig into the options to recreate a more classic way to play. Fans have recently unlocked a skin that references the iconic Game Boy roots of the game, as well as complete original music. This skin appeared after players completed the game's weekly ritual. This system gives the entire community a goal to accomplish together. By doing this, the 1989 skin was unlocked, although you can still unlock it for unlimited play by hitting the level 50 in the game. These skins are a big part of what makes this a satisfying update. And if you don't know, the music and visuals move in time with your actions. There may be more surprises coming up, but we just don't know yet. Now it's time for Monkey Plays with Cody. What is going on, guys? Welcome back to episode 10 of Monkey's Minecraft Adventures. We are one week away in our journey to defeat the mighty Ender Dragon. Will is in here for us this episode as he is on vacation for Thanksgiving break. Last episode, you guys saw us make a brewing stand as well as brewing some potions. This week, I'm going to show you guys what we are taking with us to the end. I hope you guys enjoyed the video, so we're going to get right on into it. So the first thing I'm going to make uh, for our journey is armor, obviously. We're going to have diamond armor. Um, Will is in here, so I'm just going to make his armor. So we're going to make a helmet first. Here's our helmet. Next item we're going to make is our chest piece, and this is done by arranging them in this order. Now we have our chest piece. Now we're going to make our pants, which is done by this. And we got our pants. And lastly, our boots, and this is done by doing this. So the next thing I'm gonna make for Will and I are some weapons, and that's just gonna consist of a pickaxe and a sword. And a sword is done by doing this. And we have our two swords, and now we're gonna make two pickaxes. And that's gonna be done by doing this. 
So the last piece of weaponry I'm gonna make for us is a bow and arrow. This helps us uh, when the ender dragon is flying away, we can shoot him and not take direct damage from him. So now we have our bows. So now that we made the bows, we need some arrows and that is simply done by placing a flint on top, stick in the middle and a feather on bottom. And that makes four arrows. So now that we're all done crafting our items for the adventure to the end, I'm gonna explain what I have in my inventory and why I have it. So obviously first we have our food, we have steak and baked potatoes, some great healing factors. So when we get hit by the inner dragon, we can heal up. A diamond sword for when the inner dragon flies close and we can get some lethal hits off on them. We have our bow for shooting the inner dragon when he flies away and to shoot the crystal beams that heal him when we do damage to him. We have some cobblestone, some any type of block uh, to provide us, to get us some high ground if we need to build up quickly or to build us in for extra protection. Torches so we can light up the battlefield. And then in my inventory, we have our arrows, my potions of strength and some extra blocks. That is going to do it guys for episode 10 of Monkey's Minecraft Adventures. This week I showed you guys what we're going to bring with us into the end. I made some armor, made some weapons, and showed you guys our food and potions. Tune in next week for episode 11 where we finally go to the end and test our wits against the mighty Ender Dragon. As always, have a nice one and I'll see you guys next time. Thanks Cody and thank you for watching Gen 2. I'm Madeline. And I'm Nathaniel. Stay tuned for Project Delta. Gen 2 and Delta air each week, Monday through Thursday at 7 p.m. And you can watch all of our content online at KNWT's YouTube page. Now before we go, check out Heavy Hitters with Nathaniel Cochran. Yo! Welcome to Heavy Hitters featuring Nathaniel Cochran. In Heavy Hitters, we take a look at some of the baddest mothers in video games. This week, we're looking at Kiri from Yakuza. So, full disclosure, I just got this game, so I can't fully show off all of the raw power that Kiryu has. However, in the tutorial, I was given a brief taste of how awesome he was. So Yakuza is an interesting beast of a game. It's half Japanese soap opera anime, half 3D brawler. The game takes place in Japan in the early 2000s where you play as an outcast gang member from the Japanese mafia. And you do important mafia things like beat up goons from rival gangs and race slot cars against children. Wait, no, that's not right. Uh, guys, I think we have a script error. No, no, he is racing slot cars. Oh, what? Now what? He's flirting with the pretty girl? What the heck? Well, anyway, there are a lot of leisure activities you can do outside of the main game, but let's just look at the combat. Kiryu has four distinct fighting styles, Brawler, Beast, Rush, and Dragon. Each of these have their own ups and downs, but are equally good in their own way. So, looking at Dragon, this is one of the ones I can't really show too much of because the advancement in the skill is based on the progression of the story. But this ability does have decent speed and versatility as well as some high damage. Also, I believe the way they tell it in game is that it's the fighting style that he made himself. So it's tied to your own progression and advancement throughout the game. So the more you play the game, the better you get at the game, the better this skill tree gets. The next fighting style I want to talk about is Rush. Rush is the least damaging fighting style, but it makes up for it with speed. You can do multiple dodges, and instead of picking up weapons to hit people with, you actually do a kick that stuns your enemies. And while they're stunned, you can get in a nice flurry of blows. Brute is the next fighting style. Now, Brute is the slowest fighting style, but it's one of the more fun ones. It allows you to transition from punching to wielding an item without having to press a button. Along with the weapon abilities, your fists just deal crazy amounts of damage, and you swing your arms wildly, which means it works really well in large groups of enemies. Now, the final fighting style, which is also my favorite, is Brawler. It's the Goldilocks style. Not too slow, but not too weak. The style is just right. With Brawler, you can still dodge a bit, like with Rush, but you can also still pick up items and hit people with them, like in Brute. But truly, using Brawler just really feels nice. I try and start every fight off with Brawler and then have to switch on the fly if the enemy dictates that I need to be faster or hit harder. So I would give Kiryu a 6 out of 10. His martial arts skills are very impressive and is a very versatile fighter. But he doesn't really have any superhuman abilities aside from being able to rock a white suit. I'm Nathaniel Cochran. Keep watching for Project Delta here 
on Gen 2. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another fantastic episode of Project Delta. I'm Dalton Spees, and with me today I have... I'm Nathaniel Cochran. And today we're taking a look at our favorite egg-headed assassin, Agent 47. Now, Nathaniel, just this past week, uh, Hitman 2 came out, and everybody's very excited for it, so I wanted to bring in the Hitman reboot that came out uh, just a couple years ago and take a look at it. So what, what do you think about the Hitman games? Uh, well, I've always loved watching them. I've never had much of a chance to play them. I think like I played one on PS2 at a friend's house <laughs> one time. Um, plenty of experience, of course. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I'm, I'm practically a friggin' master. So yeah, well, I'm just gonna. You're you're out. you're doing pretty well. Uh, I can see you're subduing this man and stealing the clothes right off of him. Yes, exactly. So that's kind of what assassins do, of course. The, who needs to kill people when you can just put on a Halloween costume? But um, so you you've watched a lot and like what what kind of scenes, what kind of places can you go to in the, these Hitman games? Uh, well, in this Hitman game specifically, uh, you go to Paris for a fashion show. You go Very to- Very nice. Uh, exactly, right? You go to a, an Italian villa called Sapienza uh, to kill a um, dude who basically makes bioweapons. Uh, Those kind of guys need to die, of course. <laughs> oh, of course. That's a noticer. He's going to notice me. Just, um, just uh, sneak away a little bit faster. Yeah, I'm going. I'm fine. There's nobody oh, sees me. Nothing. Don't even look at this barcode <laughs> on the back of my. Uh, it doesn't yeah. mean anything. <laughs> yeah, uh, everybody has a barcode, right? <laughs> yeah. um, uh, but then uh, you can go to Marrakesh uh, and uh, Japan. Um, I think there's one other one. Colorado. Oh, yes, Colorado, Colorado also. Uh, Colorado to take out a, an American militia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> He's not even like. What, what are uh, you doing? Uh, it's, Guarding. <laughs> no, um, okay, I'm guarding these pa uh, pallets over here. Yeah, don't mind me uh, guarding the, the jet fuel on the pallets. No, you gotta keep the jet fuel safe. <laughs> um, uh, I think my favorite mission that I've seen is probably Colorado because you have to assassinate four targets all within, um, like, all within one compound and basically... What's up, buddy? Taking a smoke oh, break? Nothing. Oh, having a, having a good oh time. give me your smokes. Oh, oh no. Smokes, let's go. Uh, well, <laughs> I didn't mean to. <laughs> I meant to passively subdue him. Oh, uh, put him in the box. Yep. Happy birthday. Somebody's going to open that up for Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas. One of the most morbid things in this, actually, is on the level Sapienza, um, you can knock out a mortician and put him in a body freezer, basically. And the thing is, nobody will be around to wake him up, so he just suffocates to death in there. Crazy how life be like that sometimes. <laughs> exactly, right? So, of course, this game is made by one of my favorite developers of all time, Square Enix. Square Enix makes the Kingdom Hearts games, which January 29th cannot come fast enough. I want Kingdom Hearts 3. I want to play it right now. Uh, Final Fantasy, that series is amazing. I love 7 and 10. 15 was not too bad, but a lot of people complain about it. So what, what do you think about Square Enix? How do you feel about them? Um, I like Square Enix. They also made uh, Deus Ex. And of course. Deus Ex is probably one of my more favorite uh, series. I covered him in my pack. Also, that's the target, by the way. Oh, um, that was a heavy hit right there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> die, die. Oh, ah, no, oh, no, this is not going out. Oh. Um, so the plan was, by the way, uh, to be to, sneaky, very uh, sneaky. Yeah, to run in as quick as possible and do this basically as a time trial and try and escape. And clearly, I did not do that. They, All right. Why didn't they pick you up? You had ray gun. <laughs> right, exactly. Um, uh, uh, you can go ahead and hit... Uh, Go down and press A. There you okay, go. Okay, cool. I, thank you. I didn't know that. Of course. Um, but no, I like Square Enix. Um, I like their edge aesthetic of, um, I'm, oh, I'm blending. Hold on. I'm doing busy paperwork. Ah, yes. Uh, I'm very busy. Yeah, working. Paper. Airplanes. Ah. Yes. Paper. Mm. Clipboard. <laughs> Justice. <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, I've, I've always kind of liked Square Enix. I've never actually played a Final Fantasy game. Don't kick me You're off. You're missing out. Me. You're missing out. Um, but I like their edge aesthetic, basically, where they very much kind of, um, oh wow, this is a very lenient friggin' uh, save point, um, because we, the dude's dead, so we're actually leaving. Um, oh my. <laughs> mission Just... over. Um, don't worry, we'll, we'll replay it, and I'll do better this we'll time. We'll do better. And by better, I mean worse. Um, so, Nathaniel, of course, this game is obviously about assassinating people, and I want to know, who are your some of your favorite assassins throughout like video games or movies or just anything. Um, I really like, um, you are cleared for field I really like just the assassin class a lot of times. Yeah. I, I know that sounds weird, but like, 
in JRPGs and stuff like that, usually the edgy boys who wear the hoods and daggers <laughs> are always fun because, you know, they're edgy. Spooky. <laughs> no, exactly, right? Oh, cutscene. Ew. Um, yeah. was that big you, big you. <laughs> oh, I'm Diana. And, uh, yep, go ahead right there. Final test again? Yep. All right, here we and go And so, of course, uh, you guys might notice we're going... <laughs> Black on black on black this week, uh, just like everybody's favorite assassin. I just wear, realized I'm wearing my tactical turtleneck. Tactical so, turtleneck. Yeah, exactly. So uh, for all you Fortnite fans out there. <laughs> no, uh, for all you Archer fans out there. They, 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 he's the Reaper in Fortnite. But everybody who knows, everybody who knows, they know it's John Wick. Uh, thankfully, uh, nobody, no Russians like killed my dog or anything before I put all this on, but. Man, do I love the John Wick movies. I know. Uh, definitely going to put a graphic right here of John Wick uh, riding the horse because that is awesome. And the free, graphic's right? actually right here because that's how the cameras work. <laughs> so uh, you can tell John Wick's been playing a lot of uh, Red Dead Redemption, you know, in his, in his time off where at the end of two, it's John Wick is literally told, yeah, you're pretty much blacklisted from being an assassin, and now there's a, like, $10 million bounty on your head. Good luck. And they just, like... And then he shoots a dude. <laughs> yeah. John, John Wick's awesome. Keanu Reeves is awesome. I don't think there's anyone better than him. That's fact. You can quote me on that. Uh, I mean, what about Jason Bourne? Well, uh, <laughs> Jesus Christ, it's Jason Bourne. That's all, that's that's all, all we got to say. Knows. That's I mean, all anybody knows. Jason Bourne, it's Jesus Christ. Um, oh, man. Re redeem him. Um, You're being hunted. I, uh, shh, don't, don't, they don't know. They oh, don't know it's me. You're still in the turtleneck. Uh, yeah, just, I, I'm matching oh, my boy. Oh, no, that was a little bit more than a, yeah. Speaking than a takedown. Speaking of John Wick, just uh, really quick here. Uh, one of my favorite things in a lot of games, especially like... Uh, Deus Ex, which has mm -hmm. uh, like a good stealth mechanic and stuff, right is uh, knockouts that involve gun kata. Like right there, I subdued that dude uh, and shot him in the back. But like punching people while shooting at the same time is always fun. Hey guys, yeah. don't mind me. Uh, oh, wait, nah, that, was, that was just a warning shot, <laughs> right? <laughs> Jesus, I shot an entire oh, no. outline around him. Um, Agent Forty Seven, he's right. down for the count once again. Yeah. Uh, down for the count, like my soul. Is based on an authentic 1979 mission. The high so some would say, <laughs> never mind, that was a dumb pun. I'm not going to say that on live TV. Don't, don't even put it on my show, please. All right. So uh, Nathaniel's uh, looking at some fighter jets, obviously, uh, showing off his, his clean bald head. And I want to thank Nathaniel for coming in. I want to thank everybody for coming in and watching this very sneaky and totally uh, not covert ops uh, assassination game. Punch! Uh, I've been Dalton Spies and with me today was... I'm Nathaniel Cochran, I'm punching a cop. Thanks for watching. <laughs>